My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan investigator, stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The House by the Sea. Well, this is the way it started. I walked in the office about 11 o'clock that morning. It was a nice warm day and I didn't have much on my mind. That's the trouble with nice days. You take a couple of easy breaths, open somebody's door, and it's just like peeling a wrapper off an atomic bomb. The lion was in his den, sitting behind his desk. He couldn't tell where he left off and the desk began. He was talking to a girl with a flock of black hair. She was the kind you see driving a Cadillac convertible down Sunset Boulevard on hot Sunday afternoons. No wonder the lion's cigar was out. It was wet on both ends. Well, well, come in, Regan, come in. I was just about to call you, but now that you're here, it makes things simpler. Miss Carmen, this is Mr. Regan. How do you do, Mr. Regan? Mr. Lyon tells me you're just the man I want. You said the same thing to a mortician last week. He is the man I want, Mr. Lyon. Well, well, that's fine, Miss Carbon. I knew you'd be pleased. I'm very proud of Jeffrey. As long as I'm in the cast, how about a look at the script, huh? Miss Carmen is associated with the famous psychic consultant, Prince Cairo. I help the prince look into people's minds. Well, that ought to be real fun if all your customers are under six. (laughs) You don't believe in thought transference, Mr. Regan. Do you? (laughs) I said I help the prince. Prince Carew sent Miss Carmen to retain an operator, Jeffrey. It's a very delicate matter, and I'm placing the entire case in your hands. Why didn't he come himself? Do you disapprove of me? I just want to know what's what. Well, Prince Carew never appears in public. He prefers to spend his time in meditation and thought. Yeah. I handle all of his outside contacts. So, Jeffrey, you just drive on out to Prince Carew's home in Ocean Town with Miss Carmen and speak to the prince. What kind of a retainer did he send? Uh, How much did you get? Now, see here, Regan, we don't discuss finances in front of clients. Oh, stop it, will you? This is another blind spot. You don't know what it's all about. All you know is she waltzed in here with a check, and you'd sell your grandmother a glue factory for two bucks. How do I know I won't wind up being a patsy again? Is there any way I can reassure you? Buy me a battleship. Jeffrey, have I ever involved you in anything that I wouldn't undertake myself? Have I ever knowingly imperiled your life? Yeah. Jeffrey. Come on, lady. What's it all about? You work for the guy. Well, I really don't know. He was excited this morning, called me in, gave me this address, and told me to make arrangements. He must have told you something. He never tells me anything. As you say, I... I just work for him. Well? All right, I'm hired. Good, good. Now call me, Jeffrey. Call me if you run into any trouble. Well, I asked her how about lunch. She said no. I asked her about dinner. She said something that meant no, so I gave up. You know, it's like that sometimes. The flag's up, the meter's ticking, and you're not getting anywhere. But from a couple of things she told me, I got the idea she was doing more than just helping the prince read minds. Well, his place turned out to be a good hour from downtown Los Angeles, up 101. It was a couple of stories of glass and concrete leaning out over the ocean. It was high and dry and quiet up there, and you got a feeling you should be hearing things and feeling things when you looked down and saw that water banging around the bottom of the cliff. She unlocked the door, and a guy in a white turban and some pants that looked like oversized diapers and a pair of tennis shoes was standing there. He had a big curved knife hanging around his waist, and he put his hand on it when he saw me. Right this way, Mr. Regan. Who's he, the butcher? Oh, that's Telly. He works for the prince. Manservant. He's from India. Yeah, I'll bet the Indians were glad to get rid of him. <laughs> Tell he's harmless, tongueless, and he doesn't hear. I like you, Mr. Reed. Come in, come in. Ah, uh, Thelma, my dear. You've returned with spoils. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Mr. Regan, this is Prince Carew. Regan, ah, the lion's eye. I've heard of you, Mr. Regan. I'm honored. Sit down. That'll be all, Thelma. Charming girl. Hmm? She handled all your outside contacts? Most efficiently. Except, of course, for matters that I must handle personally. What kind of matters? I'm in trouble, Mr. Regan, and I beg your assistance. That's all paid for. Correct. 
But there's a personal bonus in this for you. Why? Because, sir, uh, I want you to save my life. You look healthy to me. I am healthy, let me assure you. But my life has been threatened. Well, that would come under police business, wouldn't it? Normally. Uh, didn't Miss Carmen explain that this was a delicate matter? Yeah, she did. Why didn't she call the police? <laughs> I'm hardly in a position to ask the police for assistance, Mr. Regan. It is a delicate matter. Outside it says you're a mind reader, all right? What am I thinking now? That I'm a charlatan, a faker, and that I'm trying to hide something from him. That gets you the cigar. <laughs> it's been a very lucrative arrangement for the most part and very satisfactory. Except, of course, for the annoyance of having my life threatened. Who's the guy? It would be of no consequence if it were a man. It's a lady, Mr. Regan. A very beautiful and lovely creature. And she'd like nothing better than to see my carcass go out with the tide. Why does she want to kill you? A matter of confidence. Uh, suffice it to say that she is thoroughly capable of doing just that. How do you know? One, she is erratic, ill-tempered, ruthless. Two, she called me this morning and told me what she intended to do. She giving you a chance to reach for your gun? To reach for you, Mr. Egan. What do you want me to do? I feel the entire matter could be settled amicably if you were to call on her. Inform her that you are my personal bodyguard and that you are here to protect my life. You think she'd go for that? I'm positive. How long have you been blackmailing her? What? Well, your racket might last six months or a year, but not long enough to pay for a place like this. The answer is blackmail, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. I should have told you. How do you do it? I can slip him into a trance. They spell a family secret. Or do I push a buck that way? That's nice. If you want the mines red, I read them. 25 bucks a parade. And shake down. The guy's got to eat. You put the squeeze on her. She's an actress. She was in on a deal at the studios. She wouldn't shake? At first, I just told her I had to have a larger fee. Then they come out with it, cold turkey. Well, she said she'd blow your head off. Yeah, she's the kind. I went wrong on this one. I'm in a spot. Who is she? Grace Nichols, movie actress. Ever heard of her? Redhead. Makes you want to go home and kick your wife downstairs if you got one. That good? Better. But she means this business about bumping me. And I won't look good dead. All right, where she live? Over in the Palisades. Here's her address. Uh, you going over there now? Yeah. Be careful. She isn't gunning for me. That isn't what I mean. There's a skinny boy there. He's nasty. No callers. Name of Tim Rogers. I'll remember that. I hope you can talk her out of it. I've been sweating. I don't want to shake her down. I just want to get a little sleep at night. I left him sitting there, scratching his bald head under his turban. He looked about as happy as a guy who just ate a Vaseline sandwich. Well... Grace's place was too big for a marble game and too small for football. I think I remember reading something about how she got it from her third husband. There was a big wire fence all around it and a sign every 15 or 20 feet telling you not to trespass. So I parked my car outside the driveway and walked up to the front door. A guy in a chauffeur's uniform was standing there. He looked like a razor blade with arms. He gave me the fish eye and blew smoke in my face and kind of nudged me with his shoulder. Move on, Pilgrim. No handouts here. I came to see Grace Nichols. Yeah. I got business with her. Yeah. So tell her I'm here. Blow. You always like this, or did you miss lunch today? I don't know who you are, Pilgrim, but I don't like you. Beat it. I know you. There's something about a guy in a lineup. Yeah? He memorizes real easy. Copper. Investigator. Private or city, I don't care. You all smell the same. This isn't hunting season. You always carry a thirty-eight. Does it show? Maybe you got a broken rib. A real funny guy. I met all kinds of funny guys. Drift. I said I wanted to see her. And I said she wasn't in. All right, I'll tell you once more. I got business with her. So do a couple of hundred other guys. Watchdog? Ah, you're getting smart. You aren't. What kind of a crack is that? I want to see her, I'm going to see her. Trick I learned a long time ago. Shoot a guy in the knee and he'll never walk straight again. You ever done it? Oh, yeah. That's how I learned. Ow. That's one I learned, baby. Well, I might have to get a new chauffeur. You looking for a job? I already got one, lady. Timmy's going to be awfully upset when he finds out what happened to him. When someone works for me, they have to be perfect. Want his job? He wouldn't let me in. I'll let you in. You, uh, do that kind of thing often? When I have to. I suppose you have a name. It's Regan. I'm a private investigator. 
All right, Mr. Regan, you've ruined a perfectly good show for bodyguard, and you're in my house. What have we got to talk about? A guy named Keru. The prince? Must we talk about him? He thinks you're dangerous stuff. So do a lot of people. Tell me, Mr. Regan, what do you think? About what? Me. Right now or when I'm a couple of feet away? Right now. Look, remember, I just got here. I know. You must have a first name. What is it? Jeff. Oh, Jeff, we'll get along. It's in the cards. Pretty fast deal. I like it this way. Fast. Might be a bum deck. Never mind. Deal. That's the bell. How much time between rounds? Well, you know me better. Hello? Yes? Yes, right here. You know a man named Lion, Jeff? Uh Uh-huh. He seems to be roaring. Give it to me. Yeah. Regan, is that you? Well, now, how do you figure it? Now, don't be smart. Who's the dame who answered the phone? Our client's friend. Sounds like she's a friend of yours now, or maybe you have been doing some road work. Did you have something to say, or is this the day you turned scoutmaster? I'm busy. Well, you can stop being busy, lover. It's all off. Don't tell me you're passing up a fee. I'm passing up nothing. Prince Carroll called me ten minutes ago and told me to forget the whole thing, and that's what I'm telling you. How'd you know I was here? The prince told me, so it's all over. Finished. Forget it. I've already started something. I don't care what you started. I just remember. You finish it on your own time and expense sheet. Hmm. You look worried, Jeff. Anything I can do? I'm called off. You mean you're out of a job? I got one. Remember, you put my bodyguard out of commission. You owe me something. Well, Tim, boy, he'll come around. I don't want Tim anymore. I want you. Hmm. <laughs> I'll get you a drink. We can talk about it. Carew told me that Tim was a pretty good boy. You can fill his shoes. Come here and get your drink. Now, tell me about 9 o'clock tonight. It'll get dark. I got a new dress. I think you'll like it. I probably would. The place above Malibu, we could have dinner and listen to some music. I want to be with you, Jeff. That deal's fast again. I don't care. I don't care. I just decided something, Jeff. I'm going to like being with you. I'm going to like it a lot. Well, she didn't want me to go. But I was thinking about the prince and the way everything looked. I told her I'd see her that night. I was just climbing into my car when Tim Rogers, her ex-number one boy, stepped out from the gate. I waited for him to walk over. You're pretty good with your women, Regan. You look lonely, Timmy. Somebody stole your popsicle? Bum joke, Regan. I've been waiting to talk to you. You were so quiet in the house, I didn't want to make any noise. Any better here? You came out champ this afternoon. But you won't even make the prelims next time. You got something to say? Stay away from her. You're shaking. You need a drink. Stay away from her, Regan. I've been with her too long. Known her too long to take the bounce from a two-bit gum heel. Mm, Goodbye. I'm not finished, Cat. That's your version. Now get your foot off that running board, punk, or I'll take it with me. I left him standing in the middle of the driveway. If I'd had waited another minute, he'd have been crying. I stopped off and had some barbecued ribs at a drive-in out on Sunset. It was just getting dark when I got to my place. I had company. It was Velma Carmen, Prince Carew's right-hand man. She was sitting on the edge of my sofa. Her back was as stiff as a filing cabinet, and there was a little ring of white around her lip. She looked like she'd just been measured for a coffin. There was a twenty-five automatic sitting in her lap. I've been waiting for you, Mr. Wick. I asked the janitor to let me in. Yeah? He was very nice about it. I I told him I was associated with one of your clients. Yes, I told him I was associated with one of your clients. Did you know that Prince Carroll was my husband? Since when? Oh, a long time now, a long time. Not many people know that. Is that what you came here to tell me? No. I... I came to tell you that you don't have to worry anymore. None of us have to worry anymore. You mean you're calling me off the case? That's it. That's exactly it. I'm calling you off the case. Well, well, I've already been called off. My office phoned me when I was over at her house. First, Nichols? Yeah. And it was about her? Yeah. (laughs) Well, then, we don't have to worry anymore, do we? No. She's very pretty, isn't she? I've seen her many times. I think she's quite pretty. I, I could hardly blame the prince. 
I can hardly blame him at all. What are you getting at? Of course, all the others were pretty, too. Where'd you get that gun? This I bought it for thirty dollars. Let me see it, huh? Oh, yes. I brought it here so I could show it to you. I, 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 I paid thirty dollars for it. I paid thirty dollars. I'd imagine the air would be cleaner in there, don't you? What are you talking about? I mean, it's really very humane, they tell me. It's just like sitting down and never waking up. I've read all about it. You just walk in and sit down, and if you don't try to hold your breath, you... You go to sleep, don't you? You've met murderers before, Mr. Regan. Do I make a good murderer? Do I make a good murderer? <laughs> stop it, stop it, will you? You trying to tell me you killed him? Oh, Mr. Regan, that's why I came here. I shot him. I walked up behind him and I put the gun close to his back and pulled the trigger. They don't make such a great deal of noise, do they? I left him sitting there in his house by the sea and he looks very much alive. Only, only he isn't alive at all. Now answer me. Now answer me. Do I make a good murderer? Do I make a... <laughs> you are listening to the story of the house by the sea. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. And now, back to the story of the house by the sea and Jeff Regan, investigator. Well, after she got through, she settled down to a slow, even kind of a giggle that started somewhere around her shoelaces and didn't get past her knees. It was one of those things that gives you a feeling like somebody's standing in back of you with a red-hot iron ready to press your pants before you get them off. Now, she wasn't going to do any more talking, so I went downstairs and brought back a doctor friend of mine named Sammy Wing. He brought his little black bag with him and gave her a shot or something, and she wilted like last night's orchid and went to sleep on my couch. Sammy began talking. Some playmate. Wish I'd have been here for the party. I had four appendectomies and one broken leg today. So i alive. How is she? You know her better than me. No, is she going to be all right? Well, she'll wake up in five or six hours and I want some water. And then what? She might ask you what happened or it might start all over again, whatever it was. By the way, what was it? Well, I found her here when I got home. I should find something like this. She said she killed an ex-client of mine. Oh, maybe I'm lucky at that. What does all the past tense mean? I was called off the case. Oh, nice. It's all clean. No clients to protect. Is there a corp someplace? I don't know, Sammy. Call the police. They'll find out. And then you and me can go out and get a drink. She said she used this gun. Smell it, Sammy. It hasn't been fired. Safety catch is still on. She's pretty and she's nice. And I'll bet she looks like a million bucks in a bathing suit. But if I'd have met her within the last three hours, I'd have run for help. Call the police. Is that professional? This is acute hysteria. The kind that pops off guns and pops off people, and there's a lot of things they can't remember later on. Call the police. What about the gun? Other guns. Call the coroner while you're at it. Tell him to go out there with some DOA forms. He'll use them. Or will you stay here with her till I get back? Corpse hunt? Just an idea. Hitler had an idea. The odds were against him. You got about as much chance as a three-legged horse in the Kentucky Derby. She's bit somebody, and she's told you about it. I want to make sure. What do they do when a private eye walks in and messes up a nice, clean murder? Sammy, will you stay? Had any bourbon around here? Yeah. Okay, take your time. Maybe both of us will get our pictures in the paper. I left him with a kind of a soft smile on his face, like he had some inside information on Tuesday's winner at Del Mar. Well, it was 9.30 by the time I got there, and it was dark enough to give a ghost the creeps. It was different, too. Maybe it was the fog. I used that ring of keys I'd taken from her purse. It smelled dry and funny inside, and it was real quiet, like somebody was waiting for the world to fall apart. I clicked on my flashlight, and I walked down the long hall to his office. He was there, just like she said. There were three holes in the front of his shirt, but it wasn't the laundry's fault. I spotted a thirty-eight on the floor by his hand. I broke it, and three cartridges came out. It was the right gun for the job. It was pretty messed up. While I was standing there trying to figure Velma Carmen's story, the lights came on. 
A fat man wearing a sheriff's star was standing by the switch. There was a taller man in a brown overcoat next to him. They both looked like they'd just finished dinner. Scavenger hut, son. You don't talk, Charlie. Mm, ain't much for him to say, is that, Cap? Guess not. Well, son? Well, it looks like you're going to be calling me names. What do you like best? Killer, murderer, or slayer? The papers use slayer a lot. I don't like any of them. Kind of breezy for a hot boy, ain't you? Mind giving me a name? It's Regan. I'm a private detective. Hmm. It's Regan. He's a private detective, Cap. Yeah. Got a card or something with you, son? Yeah. Yeah, he's right. With International. Lion still there? Yeah. Who's that? An old bum I used to know. Regan, why do you go around killing people? The lion will be mad. Look, this is a fix. Now, why do you want to say a thing like that? Somebody tip you? Phone call a little while ago. Huh? Funny kind of a voice, a whisper. Said we'd find a stiff up here, but didn't say we'd find you. You're extra. Look, I just came here to see what it was all about. Same thing we did. Only we come up with a suspect and a corpse. No cop could ask for anything better. Charlie, better call a coroner. Ocean Town, just a small place, Regan. Only me and Charlie around. We borrow from the county when we get something like this. I can find you a real answer in an hour. You let me and Charlie worry about that. You look good enough for the time being. All right, son. Let's go. <laughs> I had as much chance as an elephant in a tea room, and if those two locked me up and booked me. So I leaned back into his gun and spun around and knocked his wrist down. He pulled the trigger, and by that time I flicked the light switch and was out the door. I didn't run for my car, I cut across the driveway and doubled back up the hill. I could hear him yelling and shooting out in the dark. I hailed a cab about five blocks away, and he took me to the place above Malibu. I found her in a booth with a piano player. She was wearing one of those black strapless things, and it was worrying a couple of ball-headed guys sitting at the bar. You're late, Jeff. We said nine o'clock. I've had three drinks all along. You want me to get mad, or are you going to catch up? How long have you been here? You sound like you're out of the mood. I thought we were going to look at the stars together. How long have you been here? It's nine o'clock. What's the matter? I've been working tonight. Well, it's after hours now. Tell me how you like my new dress. It's the right color with the wrong cut for a funeral. I haven't read the obituaries today. It'll be in tomorrow's paper, only it'll make the front page. Have a drink. Let's wait for tomorrow. Your friend was killed tonight. What friend? Kru. He was no friend of mine. I told you that. So did he. Car smash up, or did he fall off his house? 38. We didn't talk about him this afternoon. Let's not start now. Look, two cops in Ocean Town are kind of crowding me. They think I'm going to take a good picture. Is that why you're late? It's a murder rap, lady. We should have had dinner together. They'll be knocking down your door in the morning. Why, darling? Because you threatened to kill him, because he hired me to call you off. Oh, wait a moment, Jeff. We've been having fun up to now. Who told you that? Why did you think he sent me over today to sell magazines? I never found out you were called off. I suppose he hired you to scare me. Jeff, we're old friends now. I can tell you a family secret. I know about him blackmailing you. And that puts you ahead of me for the cops. Did you do it? I don't know. Did you? What he told you don't sound right. What does sound right? I went to him one day and put him in a trance, only I used scotch. Found out what he was doing and how I was doing it, so I turned the tables. It was good, clean fun, but expensive for him. You've been draining him? I thought that's why you came today. That's why I had Timmy around. Well, some of this is beginning to make change. If he was your meal tickets, then you got an alibi. I don't feel like stars anymore, Jeff. Let's go over to my place and talk. On the way over, she didn't have much to say, and I couldn't think of anything. I was all too mixed up. If she'd really been shaking him down, then she figured out. And the girl back in my apartment figured in. Only she had the wrong gun. And then there was a little business that I'd have to explain with the Ocean Town cops. Well, when we turned in the driveway, I stopped figuring. Tim Rogers, the man with the guns, was there standing on the porch. Oh, gorgeous. I've been waiting to see you. You're home late. I thought I fired you. Still tramping with this tramp, huh? I thought you'd be sick of him by now. For once, I'm glad to see you, Tim boy. That sounds cozy, but I don't want to see you. I know where your 38 is. You're wrong. It's her 38. And it's got her prints on it. Jeff, he's making it look bad for me. Ask me. Ask him what he's doing here, will you? Just in for a showdown, Angel. You're tagged for his murder. They'll want you. I fixed it good. I can fix it so you can get away. How? A friend of mine shutting off at Pedro. Four o'clock. To go all over the world. Jeff, if all of this is straight, I'm in a spot. Relax. This guy never did anything right. Tell me how I'm wrong. All right, that tip to the Ocean Town cops was wrong. Trying to pile up a scare on me was wrong. Killing Cairo was wrong. And this clinches it. Yeah? 
Well, that's where you're twisted, Pilgrim. I got a warrant out for you right now. Plugging a murder suspect is something they'll thank me for. You said her prints were on that gun. They'll find that out in the morning. And how was I to know? Just happened to hear on the radio they were looking for you tonight. I see you, I plug you. Everybody will be sorry, but it'll be manslaughter and suspended. I worked it once in Toledo. What do you say, Angel? Do I plug him and meet you somewhere in two weeks? Let me have a smoke. Let me think it over. Sure. Sure, go ahead. Angel! All the gun's empty now. I carried this for three years. I never used it. He deserved to die, didn't he? Didn't he, Regan, didn't he? I don't know, lady. You knew him better. Well, it unwound like red thread in the Levi factory. Grace Nichols had been putting the shake on the prints. He got tired of it and called me in and told me his phony story so he'd have a good self-defense angle when he finally got around to shooting her some afternoon. He had Tim planted there to keep me from really seeing her. Oh, it was a nice idea, only I bounced Tim and got inside. And then Tim made a phone call and the lion jerked me before I had a chance to compare notes with her. I guess Tim went kind of crazy seeing how well we got along together and he figured Grace would do anything if she was wanted for murder. So, he killed the prince and made her the patsy with those fingerprints. She'd handled the gun before, see. But then I had my caller, Velma Carmen, the prince's wife. She went kind of crazy, too, when she walked in and found him dead. It took three doctors a couple of weeks to tell her what really happened. When I told it all to the lion, he was mad at first, but then he saw Grace Nichols' picture in the paper. He asked just one question. What was I doing at Grace's place all afternoon? I didn't even bother to answer him. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS same time next week for hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Sterling Tracy. The role of Grace Nichols was played by Betty Lou Gerson, David Ellis was Tim Rogers, Lorene Tuttle was Velma Carmen, and Marvin Miller was Prince Carew. Original music for this program is by Dick Arant. Jeff Regan, Investigator, is heard every Saturday at 9.30 over CBS. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.